1953, Earth experienced a war of the worlds. Common bacteria stopped the aliens, but it didn't kill them. Instead, the aliens lapsed into a state of deep hibernation. Now the aliens have been resurrected, more terrifying than before. In 1953, aliens started taking over the world. Today, they're taking over our bodies.
Easy now. Oh, easy now. Miss Van Buren. Miss Van Buren. No. Easy now. Easy now. I told you. I told you they'd be back. It's all right. Get up there. Get up there. Get the restraints. Oh, no. You didn't believe me. Oh, please. Call Harrison. 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 I mean, any covert operation requires the utmost secrecy to succeed. I mean, if you were to suddenly die... As opposed to slowly die? Since when did you start calling me Harrison? Combat taught me not to get too close to anyone. But after having faced that together, I... kind of feel like we're a team now. Well, thank you. Paul. Now, if I should suddenly die... Someone has to carry on? Only fools fight without knowing who their enemies are. Without intelligence, this war would be fought blind and no doubt lost. Dead and blind. Boy, you are a cheerful one tonight. Excellent cover. Who would ever think to look for information in a mental hospital? Check. I think that it's about time that you gave me the profile on your agent, don't you? She's extraordinary, Colonel. Her name is uh, Sylvia Van Buren. 1953, she fought alongside Clayton Forrester in the Great Alien Invasion. And she became his top assistant in the secret Ezekiel project. Then she knows everything that your adopted father knew. More or less, yes. But she suffered for it, Colonel. You see, she also became a human electromagnetic barometer for an amazing accuracy record. She correctly predicted earthquakes and volcanic and tsunami activity 85% of the time. Unfortunately, this kind of knowledge came complete with nosebleeds and convulsions and severe episodes of manic depression. How the hell did that happen? I don't know. My theory is long-term exposure to disease and irradiated alien tissue. Anybody know you're here? Yes, thank you. I'd leave now if I were you. It's not safe here. Dr. Blackwood. Trust me. It's not safe out there either. Oh, hell. I forgot that. Sorry to trouble you so late, Dr. Blackwood. It's a long drive. There's no trouble at all. Sylvia's the only real family I have left. <sighs> Miss Van Buren's very bad tonight. Even worse than before that Mount St. Helens blast, and that was bad. She predicted Mount St. Helens? This is not good. Sylvia, it's me. I'm here. Uh, uh, Clayton, is that you? Oh, it's Harrison, Sylvia. It's Harrison. Tell me what's wrong now. What's happening? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, please, take this thing off. Oh. Yes. oh, thank you. Oh, God, it's much better. Okay. He's a friend, so He's a friend. It's okay. It's all right. It's a friend. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Ironhorse, U.S. Army Special Forces, presently attached to Dr. Blackwood's mission. And Miss Van Buren, I must say that it is a pleasure to meet such a distinguished veteran of the War of 53. The aliens. The aliens are back. They're so close. Oh, please, you believe me, don't you? Yes, I believe you, Sylvia. Now, tell me, tell me where they are. Well, you can afford them somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in, in the Northwest, here, here in the Northwest. Wyoming, no, oh, Montana. Oh, God, 
Oh, my hand! Oh, the pain in my hand! Oh, God, he's gonna find them! Oh, find them! Please, and kill them! Kill them! Oh, I'm sorry. Me, kill them. I'm sorry. Oh, you have to leave now. Oh, Harry, no, don't leave. Harry, don't leave me! Harry! Okay, wait. Go away! Go away! Dr. Blockbridge, you better leave now, please! Turn with me! Hey! I regret to report that things are not going as planned. The vehicle has malfunctioned, Advocate. We believe it is the carberry house. We've learned the location of the storage facility, Advocate. It's in a place called Canada. But without transportation, it will take us more time than the bodies we occupy can tolerate. Radiation sores are already becoming quite obvious. Then acquire new human bodies, comrade. Use as many as you need to reach the facility and complete your mission. Be clever. Nothing can prevent you from reviving our brethren. What do we do about transportation? Abandon the vehicle. And find other transport. You must recover the sleeping ones. I let the Whitewood phone ring a couple of thousand times tonight, Harrison. Doesn't anyone pick up the phone down there? They got their hands full here tonight, Suzanne. Well, join the club, Doc. I got two fresh transmission intercepts on the supercomputer tonight, the last one 15 minutes ago. Can you locate them? Well, they're both pretty close together in northeastern Montana. I'll be damned. That fits with Sylvia's prediction. Nearest town? Wolfjaw. Wolfjaw. Wolfjaw, Montana. That's Indian territory. Looks like we've got aliens moving into the neighborhood. Let's go. Great. First the white man, now aliens. So sorry to bother you. We were just out hunting and our truck broke down. Sam here hurt himself trying to fix the rear axle. We are wondering if he might give us some of the lift. Okay. Just to the border, though. But uh, you'll have to sit in the back, I'm afraid. Government rules. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, Sam, you just couldn't walk no more. Hey, uh, what happened to your face? Mosquitoes. Big ones. That's it. I'm, go I'm going. All right, now let's get this straight. You're telling me that you're a government agent from California on the trail of foreign spies. That's right, Sheriff DeMoss. Uh-huh. And you, mister? I'm his, uh, I'm his driver. Uh-huh. And just w what would they be here to spy on in Wolf Jaw, Montana? Well, I'm afraid that's classified information, Sheriff. But I can tell you that these spies they might look like anyone, and they'll be carrying strange paraphernalia. Like radio equipment. We traced a highly unusual electromagnetic transmission from here about 8 o'clock last night. 8 o'clock? I was trying to tape the Bears game, and all of a sudden, my set went batty. So either you smart government fellas know how to unscramble a videotape?
Bates, then? No question. Hell, I knew it was subversives. I mean, only the damn Ruskies would mess with Monday Night Football. Ah, uh, Norton and the Green Machine. Now we're in business. Howdy, boys. I'm new in town looking for a good cup of fresh black coffee. What do you do, drive straight through? <laughs> the way I like it. I'd help. Suzanne's crashed on the back. Good. She can come with me to the airport, then. Here, copy this. I suggest you and Norton stay here and chat with your people. Find out if anyone saw anything, although I doubt it. Suzanne! Wait a minute, where the hell are you going? Back to see Sylvia. Over there is first stage for those flights. Much obliged. All right. How did Sylvia end up here, anyway? Well, after Clayton Forrester's death, she slowly became obsessed with a crazy and rather unpopular idea that someday, someday they'd be back. Sylvia's doing a lot better, Doctor, but she's still been a little nervous. 30 minutes, OK? Who are you? It's Harrison, Sylvia. And I need your help. <laughs> Thank you again for the TV, Harry. It's the only friend I have. I know, Sylvia. Now, what do you think this all means? Oh. It means more than beans and queens. Harry, do you remember Clayton's study of the alien eye? Vaguely. Why? Because the way these things see us is more like this doohickey than old Saint Nicky. Harrison, we're wasting our time. Hang in there, Suzanne. But she's mad. Oh, yes, dear, quite mad. And so would you be if you lived in a world all topsy-turvy. I told them the aliens would be back, and they didn't believe me. They said I was insane. So they hooked electrodes up to my brain till I couldn't even remember my name. <laughs> Rain in Spain stays mainly in the plane. This is not Spain, Harry. What are you trying to tell me, Sylvia? This is someplace on Earth. 
but seen from outer space. So simple. An alien map. Something worth breaking radio silence to find out. Which means something important. Ready here. We now we're cooking. An orbital view of Mama Earth. Jordan, run the North American weather satellite comparison. Where is that? Place in Canada, near Regina. On our way. Next flight out. All that I need is a wall. To a board I can see. To a board I can see. No, you don't. The faster we get the equipment inside, the sooner we can practice. I have no time for practice. Very funny. Now beat it. Who's next? Let's go, you Patience, guys. Comrades, we'll know when the time is right. Get your fat bully butt out here! All right, come on, guys. Come on, let's go. Come on. Hey. Come on. Come on, hustle up. Come on. Tough luck. I've got to get some gas. We're going to stop, Mom. That's good, dear. Put your shoes on, Bobby. Yes, Granny. But what about the Ferengi, Captain? Bobby, put your shoes on now. Oh, all right, Mom. Yeah. Wash your hands when you finish, Bobby. I know already, Mom. Good afternoon. Do you take Visa? We take everything. <gasps> Mom! In front, Bobby. Immortal. To life immortal. What? But beef is good for you. Not if it takes 21 pounds of protein feed and grain to produce one pound of dead cow for human consumption. Look at this, Colonel. Meaning? Meaning it's absurdly inefficient. I mean, how long can we go on on this small and hungry planet with with this kind of absurd luxury? Here comes the vegetarian speech. I don't mean to spoil your meal. Go ahead. Eat. Chew on, Colonel. Enjoy Trump yourself. Two hours ago, the home of the Warden's Cup took a bloody turn when in a freak accident, one American prison player lost an arm and died. 
another prisoner, and I quote, exploded during practice. Three other convict teammates are missing at this time today. Exploded? That sounds suspiciously like our people. Oh, one hell of a hockey game. I think we should leave now, people. Do I have to eat this stuff? It's good for you. Make you grow big and strong like your father. When you get older and bigger, Bobby, you will understand. And then you'll become one of us. We're members of a U.S. government inquiry team, Captain. We have reason to believe this may be the result of organochloride poisoning. Acid rain. Oh, really? Huh, that's nice. Any official identification? So it takes someone blowing up to get you yanks to believe us about pollution, eh? Yeah, that's always an attention grabber, Captain. Mead! It ate right through the ice down to the concrete. Perhaps from the high acidity of their fluids. No, my guess is that it's an exothermic reaction to decomposing alien matter. <laughs> Norton's got something. I'll take care of it. Thanks. Where are they now, Mr. Drake? Headed northeast. They're only about 50 miles ahead of us. Ready to track, Colonel? Next right turn. I feel them. Speak as the body would speak, for the boy's sake. Sorry, Bobby. Turned right, heading east. 23 kilometers and closing. May I help you, sir? Gosh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm lost. Well, the main road's back the other way. This is a restricted area. We're Americans. We're not from around here. Uh, could you please show us where we are on the map? Anything wrong, ma'am? Why, yes, young man. My old eyes fail me. Have I dropped a stitch here? <sighs> Maybe I can help. You haven't got a prayer. Ah! <laughs> Let me do the talking. Hi, we're all Americans here. I wonder if maybe you could possibly come out and... Hey! Hey! hey. Very smooth, Colonel. Here in the lake. A touch will be enough. Soon we will be many. To, to life immortal? That's my boy. Waste no time, it will be light soon. 
wait here, Bobby. terrorists. And who are you? We can't say exactly. But we're legitimate. More or less. I want nothing less than the truth or we'll be here all night. I promise you. Now, last time. Who are you? Why are you here? That is classified information. Classified by whom? Look, perhaps we better speak with your CO. I am the CO! Why do I get the feeling this is completely out of control? Could it be the iron bars? Didn't this all start with you saying, let me do the talking? Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, mister. OK, then. Now what? I don't know. I'm just going gonna, gonna to put it out there. Excuse me, sir. How long have you been a smoker? Blow it out, slime ball. <laughs> People are just drawn to them, aren't they? It's a gift. I wonder what's on TV tonight. Celebrity mud wrestling. Look, I know it's a sensitive issue, but do you realize that the insides of your lungs must look like cooked marshmallows, all charcoal black? Seriously, as a chain smoker, you must smoke, what, three, four packs a day? You just don't know when to quit, do you? That sounds like it's your problem, not mine. Look, I know that this is real difficult. You want to quit. You think about it all the time. Weeks go by and months go by and then whammo. One day, the doctor calls and he tells you, goodbye. Maybe this is goodbye for you, wise guy. The most important thing is you can't give up hope. You've got to think that you can lick this now. Now, I'm a doctor. I can help you. But you've got to give me your entire cooperation. OK? That's what I made, look. Yeah, so what? The secret to quitting smoking? Relaxation. Now, for instance, if you were to look at that clock and watch the second hand go around. Is this some kind of nicotine withdrawal technique? Exactly. You got it. Now, just turn around. Go ahead, turn around. Take a big, deep breath. And relax. Just watch that second hand go round. Go ahead. Good, good. Just turn around and look at the clock. Right then. Slowly. Steadily. Surely. Around. And around. All 
60 seconds and 60 minutes all day around, all night around. And if you watch time pass, it slows down, going around and around and around until all time disappears into space. And you are feeling tired now, very tired, very sleepy, but you're feeling good, yes, you're feeling good. How did you do that? It's a common technique, Suzanne. It's useful on highly repressed individuals. You have surprised me again, Doctor. Harrison, he still has his gun. Would you put your gun on the table, please? Good. Are you feeling good? I feel good. Good. Feeling good is good enough. Would you come here, please? Now turn around. You are a dangerous man. But lovable. Let's move, people. We've got work to do. You sleep. And when you wake up, you'll remember nothing except the thing that you gave up smoking. I quit. Good. You'll thank me for this. Thank you. Norton, you need a hand? No, I'm fine. They're below me, also in drums. How barbaric of these primitives. Let us wake the sleepers. Our need for more troops cannot be overemphasized. The field unit is well aware of this, comrade. If they've kept a schedule, they should be reviving our brethren even now. What in God's name is going on? One guess as to who's winning out there. It's not the home team, Doc. Suzanne? Norton? You stay here. Doc, you and I will recon the situation. You? Think of me as your spiritual advisor. You're just weird, Blackwood. Maybe, but when I grow up, I want to be just like you. How did a nice girl like me get into this mess? I'm just a dude with a love of computers, you figure. Something in the water. Yeah, there's something happening over there, too. Find the water. Cut 
must be a hundred of them. Alien reinforcements. That's it. The Canadians, they must have stored some of the aliens underwater since 1953. How did you know that? Just on a lucky hunch, Colonel. Sound. Never forget that sound as well. <laughs> Honorable retreat, Colonel! Excellent idea. Nobody I want to know. Me neither. Let's get the guys and get out of here. Thank heavens they're all right. C4 here to blow up the Eiffel Tower. You better have. Those will be our famous last words. Will you please explain to me how blowing up these power lines is going to destroy aliens way over there? It's a matter of physics, Suzanne. It's a wet night. When a million volts of raw electricity meets the liquid surface of that lake, it's gonna blow everything the kingdom come. You ever heard of wall lightning? Cut the chatter, folks, before we get more company. What are we going to tell the Canadian authorities? That they were terrorists? How about illegal aliens? I can hardly believe we won. We tied, Suzanne. Too many got away tonight. There's got to be thousands more buried out there all over the world. And we've got to find them before they do. And we've only just started. Thank you.